We are getting a little bit personal in today's video and I'm going to be talking about the truth about my bottom surgery experience. Hey it's buds, it's Jamie, welcome back to another video of First Video Channel. I don't know but welcome either way. This is my second time trying to record because I'm just so not used to talking about personal things. I react to memes, I comment on LGBT plus related news and topics and things that's happening. I don't talk about myself anymore. I do very occasionally, but it's few and far between. I mean, this is what my whole channel used to be. I am just waffling. But today I want to talk to you about my experiences of having bottom surgery and some of the comments and assumptions I've received since I had it done. Specifically, transphobes making assumptions and saying some very strange things. Whoa, yay. So a little over six years ago now, in January 2018, I had first stage metoidia plasty. Now metoidioplasty is a type of bottom surgery, it's not on your butt, it's on your genitals for trans masculine people. If you want to know more about it, I have a whole playlist of my lower surgery experience. I will leave a link to it in the description box down below so you can go check that out. Today I'm just going to be talking about my experience with having it and like reactions after I've had it rather than talking about what the surgery actually is. So I had this surgery and I had some complications with my first stage in January 2018. I'm going to put a trigger warning here if you you do not like the talk of surgery, of blood, of things going wrong, of like, you know, all that kind of stuff, I would probably recommend not watching this video any further or skipping through bits of it. The whole thing isn't like gore and blood, there's just a couple mentions that I want to pre-warn people about in case you will be uncomfortable with that. So pre-warning done, let's get on with it, yes. So I was very nervous about having surgery and it's something that I only ever wanted to do, like if I, I felt like a very strong need to do it. So this surgery was something I needed to do for myself. And I remember going down for surgery and all of that stuff that happens and waking up very groggy. Anesthetic isn't to my friend so I was not feeling too great but I was told that everything went fine and I was honestly very thrilled and relieved to have just done it and I was like okay now I just need to recover. Later on in the day that I had surgery I started getting a lot of swelling down there like when I say a lot of swelling I mean a lot like it was very pressured it was a lot swollen much swollen just a whole mound of swell down there and the doctor gave a recommendation of let's wrap it tightly and pop an ice pack on top a very large ice pack and um, maybe proportionately appropriate but yeah I, I basically had this kind of tape going over it and some ice on top to try and calm the swelling down and get it to reduce naturally. Needless to say, this was not the end of it. That would not be difficult in of itself. Oh, some swelling, I needed an ice pack, how chilly. No, that was not the end of it. The ice pack and the dressings did not work. It actually kept getting worse and this, a surgeon, a different one who actually did the operation because he left on holiday or something immediately after doing the operation, I don't know. So a different person from the team who was lovely came by and was like, yeah, that's not going away. I'm gonna have to drain it. And I was like, I'm sorry what to drain it no thanks this is where it gets a lot so just if you're still watching but you're still a bit squeamish this is where it gets a bit more intense so a section of the stitches it was more on my right side so like th this side down in the nether regions <laughs> some stitches had to be unpicked from that area and then without anesthetic i was still on like some painkillers but it, whew, they did not touch the sides of this the surgeon literally squeezed like down there where it was swollen and when i tell you a cup full of black currant jam came out that is exactly what happened it wasn't actually black currant jam but you get the idea of what it looked like and uh, yeah it, it was so grim and so ironically and not deliberately with my toast the next morning, I got black currant jam. I had naked toast, okay? I just want to address the fact that I can talk about it a lot more casually and lighthearted now because it has been over six years. This was something that caused me a lot of like emotional difficulty for about a year after I had surgery. I wasn't in the best place. I found it really, really tough at the time and the recovery and the kind of aftermath, it was just not a good time and it took me a while to get past that and feel better about it. Not in terms of like regretting having it, but just the pain and the stress and the fear that happened post-op because of the complications. So I just want to address the fact that I'm joking about it now and like black current jam, but it took me a while to get to where I am at the moment. Some of the details are a little bit fuzzy as well because it was a very long time ago so if you want like a very specified accurate timeline and everything that happened and how it happened then do go check out my lower surgery playlist because it is all there anyway squeeze squeeze ouch ouch worst pain of my life it honestly was 
horrible. And then the open wound was kind of like packed, like dressings were put inside it and then like on top as well. And then it was re-iced and I was kind of left to see if that fixed the problem. The next day, the nurse comes in. This is after I've had my naked toast. <laughs> the next day, the nurse comes in and is like, okay, it's time to change your dressings. Let's have a look. Woohoo. She undresses things and then starts pulling out the padding, the stuffing from inside. <laughs> and then as she's like pulling out the last bit, it was like like a spurt, a spurt of blood. It's not the most amount of blood, but it's like a proper bit of like, like a spurt comes out from my groin area and it goes all the way out from my body and shoots past the end of the bed and like goes on the floor near the wall. And it's just like this, this drop of blood. It was quite impressive to be honest. If I didn't find it so absolutely horrifying, I would have been impressed. <laughs> Long story short, after that happened and like the swelling came back and I had a horrible time on the toilet where all this blood came out and it was just not a great time and I had to have it squeezed again. I was told that I needed a emergency exploratory surgery to see what was going on and to fix the problem. And it turned out that a uh, artery had been nicked and it was just like bleeding a lot. And so that was fixed up, everything was restitched and it was all good as if there had been no problem, there's been no impact on my results whatsoever and I had no further issues to do with this surgery. I ended up spending a week in hospital opposed to the two days that you typically would for this kind of surgery, but then I I was allowed home and the recovery was not fun, but it was uneventful. It was kind of as you would expect it to be. Just, I was waddling around, going to the toilet was difficult. I mean, pooping was weird for a couple weeks and then it was fine. In the playlist as well, there's videos all about the recovery process. Like it was as it's expected, but the recovery of lower surgery is quite brutal. It, it was still painful there was a lot of bruising but nothing else went wrong. It was as tricky as it typically would be expected to recover from a surgical procedure. And then the, I'm getting to the bit I'm building to right, you need the backstory. But about a year after I had surgery, so at the end of 2018, I made a video talking about how it had gone wrong and talking about the complications I'd had, the impact it had on my life still to that day, uh, and how difficult I had found the experience. You know, I was still at the stage where I felt very shaken up by the experience and whenever I thought about certain things I did have flashbacks about it and it was very difficult um there were a couple moments in particular that I struggled with and I just wanted to be really honest and open and make this video talking about the fact that I had this surgery that I was yes nervous about having because I think if you're not nervous about having surgery then you know I think there is a lot to be nervous about when having a surgical procedure but I was also really excited about it this was something I needed to feel comfortable in myself and to help with my gender dysphoria that I was struggling with so I knew that it would have a positive impact on my life and that's why I was having surgery but it doesn't stop it from being able to go wrong that's why I made that video at the end of 2018 to just be like hey look I had the surgery it had has greatly reduced my gender dysphoria. I'm very happy with the results. I don't regret getting it, but like emotionally, I am struggling a bit with the fact that I had complications. And that's what I wanted to talk about. Even if you are excited about it, even if this is a surgery that's gonna greatly improve your life, it can still be scary and things can still go wrong. That's what that video was about. You can also go watch that one. It's still up on my channel. Any surgery can have complications. And so I wanted to be honest and be like, mine did. <laughs> so this is the video that I made. It's sat on my channel for years, but within the last year, I'm pretty sure it's within the last year, I think. I think somebody, no, I know somebody made a video commenting on it. Uh, somebody who's not very nice, like a transphobic person, made a like response, reaction, whatever video to mine. I haven't watched the video, I can't remember who it was, but I've been told about it, I know it's horrible, and I know it's also stirred up other people to say things as well. One of those instances, I don't know if it's directly correlated, but it just seems to all stem from this one video and it started, there was no problem for like five years nearly, and then suddenly multiple comments and multiple messages about this video and then from other transphobic people like on places like Twitter and just messaging me and leaving comments and being like oh you're lower surgery <laughs> and one of those types of comments was in reply to a tweet I did last year about my book release so I tweeted this is me holding an actual copy of my actual book 
Oh, my actual god. The actual pre order link for you to get an actual copy is in my actual bio. I was, I was very excited. I hate reading my tweets. I don't tweet and I don't thread very much because I feel really awkward writing stuff, but I tweeted this. I was very excited. I got a lot of lovely responses. Thank you. Somebody quote retweeted that saying, I heard she left some important things out of her book. Blah for the misgendering, right? How much effort did they put in to actually make sure they misgendered me? Is there money behind her arrogance? You can check out the horror of her bottom surgery on YouTube if it's still there. Very much is still there. This was said before my book was even released. So I have no idea where they could have heard anything about what was in it. Like I didn't even tell friends and close people specifically what was in the book. So there's no way anybody could have actually known what was in it. If they'd waited until the book came out and, and read it and bought it, and I would have very much appreciated the sale, they would have known that I did write about how generally surgeries are a very difficult and serious thing to have, and there can be complications, and you need to be aware of all the pros and cons and everything. And I discussed the complications that I had personally had in relation to my lower surgery and that it was not a good time for me. So yes, things can and do go wrong. And I did not shy away from that in my book and I've never shied away from it on my channel. Another similar tweet in response to the same tweet I did says, everything you need to know about being trans are the photos of your surgeries in this book. I mean, that's a very personal thing. No, they are not. Do you discuss graphically the complications that you experienced that all over my YouTube? And I don't shy away from the fact that I have complications in the book either. Are you honest about the side effects of surgeries and hormones you take now and will take for the rest of your life? Yes. Although transphobes don't feel that these things are honest because they have their own narrative about what being trans is like and what surgeries and hormones are like and it's not true. I've had other ones of, but did you include the revelation that your bottom surgery almost killed you and now you describe PTSD symptoms since almost dying with your own blood spraying everywhere? How you were in the worst pain of your life? No. Might be good info for others thinking to do the same. Mm -hmm. Honestly, the drama in that tweet. Oh my god. So I've never denied that it was a relatively serious situation. I had to have emergency second surgery, all this stuff went on, it was complicated. Precautions were taken, like asking for my blood type just in case. But I did not nearly die. <laughs> Okay. I was not almost dying as my blood sprayed onto the floor. It was one spurt. One spurt, okay? I had a hematoma that refilled. Yes, I was in a lot of pain. Yes, it was the worst pain I've ever experienced. And it was not a fun situation, but the embellishments that transphobes add onto that is ridiculous. And they do it to try and justify their bigotry. It's just, wow. It's like, okay, yeah, let me be honest about the fact that things went a bit wrong and it was painful and it was uncomfortable and it was scary. And this is what happened. And they're like, he nearly died. There was blood spraying everywhere. The walls were dripping with it. Like, wow, I think you should write a horror novel. But seriously, I'm not afraid of the fact that I had complications in relation to the surgery. I don't think they give transphobes any kind of moral justification to be transphobic or say that trans people shouldn't have surgeries or any of that kind of thing. Because I didn't have complications because I was having a trans-related surgery. I had complications because I was having surgery. And any surgery comes with risks, including the risk that things can go wrong. But what I've found is that trans surgeries and trans things in general, but specifically here, trans surgeries are held to this unattainable standard of needing to be absolutely perfect. And if there's even a whisper of something going wrong, it gets blown out of proportion and it is just used as a way for people to try and justify being transphobic and saying that trans people shouldn't have access to trans related surgeries. In reality, trans surgeries are a necessary surgery. They are surgeries that trans people deserve to be able to access and they are surgeries that greatly improve well-being and they are also surgeries that come with a less than 1% regret rate when the overall average regret rate for surgical and medical procedures is over 14%. So can we please stop holding trans-related healthcare to this unattainable standard that no other healthcare is held to, okay? Trans-related surgeries carry the same risks as other types of surgeries. I mean, getting a tooth filling comes with risks, but you don't see bigots on the internet shouting about how we shouldn't go to the dentist. And it didn't just stop at tweets, there was also this very dramatic post that was made from an upside down clipped portion of the video here that I told you about, um, where I talked about the complications. And they also claimed that I nearly passed away. The post also said that I continue to promote this surgery to my young audience. YouTuber nearly passes away from bottom surgery, continues to promote it to their young audience. I don't know 
why they think they know my audience demographics. Most of my audience is in the 20s and 30s and between their mid 20s and mid 30s. So I wouldn't consider that particularly young. That's like full grown adults. I did want to address that accusation of promoting this surgery and encouraging other people to have it because it's not just this post that's done it. It's like a lot of people I've seen talking about surgery and just like any trans person talking about their surgery. It's like, oh, you're sharing your experiences in a very neutral way that is just from your personal perspective and talking about your own life. Oh my God, you are demanding that everybody does what you've done. It's very much completely taken out of context. It's like me sitting there and going, hello, I've had this surgery. This is how it went. And this is the impact it's had on my life. There is the information, do with it what you will. They take that as me encouraging people and me convincing people to have this done. Be trans YouTuber, vlog your bottom surgery. Why do they all do this? Is it because it's not on my butt? Bottom surgery, it's called bottom surgery. Develop hematoma post-op, squeezed out by doctor, very painful. Wound swells and spurts blood everywhere. Arterial bleeding discovered, wounds reopened for exploratory surgery. Write book, presumably encouraging people to get to the surgery. Presumably encourage, like they're not even giving me the opportunity. It's like you are guilty until proven innocent, but you'll never be proven innocent because we just hate you anyway because you're trans. Yeah, I mean, they got that relatively accurate aside from it wasn't spurting blood everywhere and I did not encourage people to get the surgery, but it's not the worst. Yeah, that is pretty much what happened. But essentially, all this information they have and everything that they have an opportunity to embellish on, like nearly passes away, blood is spurting and everywhere and pouring down off the ceiling. They only know that information because I made a video about it. I find it funny that they are using information and picking on a video where I'm literally talking very openly and honestly about how scary it was and how things went wrong. They're using the information I've given them to accuse me of encouraging other people to have this surgery. Maybe conveniently choosing to forget that they only know any of this in the first place because I chose to share it online. They know I had complications because I told them. They know I struggled afterwards because I told them. Yet they use this information that I provided online as some kind of gotcha moment. Literally accusing me of hiding what I've already shared very publicly. In great detail, like the mental gymnastics of that logic, or the lack of, it hurts my brain. There is just no logic to that. There is just transphobia. The video I made about my experience has been live for over five years. It has nearly 150k views and I have never and will never hide that video unless I'm also like hiding all of my videos. That's the only situation where I would hide it because I have nothing to hide. I'm not really sure how they are making the connection between that video and me encouraging other people to have surgery and like being like hey uh, I had some major issues and uh, I think you want to experience them too so go get this surgery it's like no, that's not happening this accusation and the assumptions made around my surgery and the embellishments and the dramatization made by transphobes is still something that happens on a fairly regular basis which is why I wanted to make a video talking about it. I also wanted to talk about how important it is to listen to the truth of a situation and hear about trans people's lives and experiences from trans people because what I've seen is one person react to this video with their opinion, their embellishments, their dramatization, their lies and then other people have taken what they have said about me and taken that for truth and run with it and shared it elsewhere. I know it happens a lot. I'm describing how lies spread, but it's frustrating that so often trans people are just not listened to when it comes to trans experiences and trans topics. Because if you looked at my whole playlist and videos I've made since that one where I talk about my complications, I don't think you could pretend to have the same opinion unless you were just outright, no, I just don't like trans people. Because I've spoken about how much it's improved my life. I've spoken about how I don't regret it. I've spoken about how I'm really happy with my results. And I've spoken about how in terms of my entire transition, there is nothing I regret and I have no regrets over transitioning, both in the social things I've done and the medical things I've done. But that all gets ignored. I am here to share my own own journey and my own experiences to help other people feel less alone, to educate people who don't know about the process and to humanize the trans experience. I am not here to encourage or discourage anyone from doing anything. I'm just here talking about my life and what I do and how I feel. So the truth about my bottom surgery is that 
Yes, I had complications. Yes, it was scary. Yes, it was painful. And yes, for about a year afterwards, I struggled with flashbacks about certain elements of the situation and I wasn't in the best headspace because of it. But then about six months after I made the video about the complications in mid 2019, I went on to have my second surgery. I was well past the difficult feelings I'd been having previously. And my second surgery went totally fine. No hiccups. I wasn't scared. I felt good going into it. A bit nervous, it's surgery as you will always be nervous about having surgery, but it went totally fine and I healed up within a couple of weeks. So six years later and I have no regrets. I'm very, very happy. Would I have preferred to not have complications? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but it doesn't mean I regret getting it done. Just because a trans person had complications in relation to a trans related surgery does not mean that trans surgeries are bad or dangerous or shouldn't be done. Because trans surgeries come with risks and have the potential for complications, not because they're trans related, but because they are surgery and any surgery can go wrong and does go wrong sometimes. So really anybody going around saying that trans related surgeries are too dangerous and people shouldn't have them because things go wrong, they are a hypocrite unless they are also running around saying that no surgeries should happen ever. And they are hypocrites because they don't say that. Because <laughs> it's nothing to do with surgery and it's all to do with trans people. It's another shield that bigots try and hide their transphobia behind and it is frustrating that my experience is being used by transphobes to spread lies, to make them feel like they can strengthen strengthen their argument to be hateful and to fear monger in others and just generally take an experience that has really improved my life and turned out really great for me and twist it into something horrible and spread that and then other people are listening to them rather than hearing what I have to say about it. So yes, yeah, frustrating. I wanted to make this video that's like, you know, the truth about my bottom surgery and call this out because it's not something I've really addressed fully that this kind of thing is happening. And I'm sorry if this was a little waffly. I'm not very used to making videos like this, but I hope that it made sense and I hope that it was useful. And yeah, let me know in the description. Let me know in the description. Let me know in the comments uh, what you think. Please go uh, say something, preferably nice. And think about giving the video a thumbs up and subscribing if you want to. And yeah, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Much love. Bye.